Uh, great to meet you again, guys. Uh, today we will uh, have an opportunity to uh, design a gamification together, uh, and gamification that uh, that gives people possibility to engage both in online and offline way. So in case you uh, didn't have an opportunity to see me last week, I am uh, a co-founder of Guerrera, a digital agency which uh, uh, creates uh, gamified uh, digital products for uh, change makers since uh, 2013. So we have uh, more than 80 projects delivered already. And today I want to uh, share some experience with you. And um, more importantly, I want to share this very specific uh, type of thinking about designing gamification that, in my opinion and from my experience, uh, gives uh, the most uh, probability uh, to succeed and to, to, to meet the project goals. So uh, before we start, uh, I will share my presentation with you. We will uh, work today both on the presentation and, the, and Miro. Uh, and I want to ask you about yourself. So if you could write in a chat, what is your role in your organization and uh, if you are more a manager or a designer or a project co coordinator, or for example, you are responsible for ideating projects. So please uh, let me know what is your role and uh, maybe what are your uh, specific expectations uh, from this workshop. I am waiting for your answers in the chat. So we have trainers, managers, designers and managers. Uh, people, uh, Swiss army people <laughs> doing everything and people who are founding organizations. Cool. So yeah, uh, I, I very much uh, identify with uh, Swiss army people. Uh, I am uh, yeah also a co-founder, manager, designer and uh, networker. So uh, so I think this uh, this workshop and uh, seeing the, this uh, uh, distribution of different skills will be great for us to to create something uh, something cool together. So we are meeting here because um, it is uh, not that easy to combine online and uh, offline activities, especially in social projects, especially in digital products. Uh, we in Guerrero have some experience in this topic, so we want to share this specific uh, stuff with you. And um, at the beginning, I want to, to say that it's not really that I will focus so much on how to combine those online and offline activities, because for me and from my perspective, it's it's kind of a basic challenge we have in, in our project. So I want to focus today on this very specific, very specific framework for for designing and implementing uh, projects that engage people. And we will use this uh, online and offline project as a case study uh, so we could understand different challenges that are connected with uh, this type of project. So uh, we have 90 minutes. 90 minutes is not a lot. Usually, when we run gamification workshop, it takes uh, at least six hours. Uh, so, uh, because of that, we need to uh, implement a few rules. So first, we would work on a prepared case study. So I have some project I want to work uh, with you on. Uh, we will not be able to, to, to divide you into groups, and, uh, and so, so every group could work on different case study. We would work on one case study together. So we will create something like a collective uh, brainstorm. Uh, so I would like to encourage you to be active both in a chat and if you feel comfortable with it, uh, you could uh, turn on your camera and take more active participation in discussion and different uh, activities we would be taking together. Uh, as I said before, we would use Miro as a tool for brainstorming, but uh, I will uh, manage it and share uh, this Miro screen with you in a very specific moment of today's workshop. Uh, so we have a uh, prepared template for today, so don't worry, we will uh, hopefully be successful in this uh, collective brainstorm. So 
thank you for your uh, small introductions in the chat. And now I want to ask you another question. Question that's, uh, that is quite important in, in today's workshop. So this question is, what is your favorite game? And uh, when I uh, say game, I, I think of different types of games, computer games, but also you know, offline games, uh, board games, any type of game that you like. And please uh, explain why this specific game is your um, favorite one. So please write in the chat. What is your favorite game and why? For some people, it takes a moment to think and, and, uh, and decide. And some people have very short and quick answers because they love a very specific one. Candy Crush, CityQuest. But please, guys, uh, provide uh, explanation. Why, why uh, exactly Candy Crush or CityQuest or Dodgeball or Geocaching? This is more about these explanations than your uh, specific choices. Dodgeball because I get to move, be alert, laugh, get uh, revenge. Yeah, so uh, so the specific energy and and uh, cooperation or competition with other players. Online games because we are sharing your knowledge. Yeah, and communication with other players. City Quest because of solving problems, teamwork. Mm -hmm. Playing cards. Have to think while playing. Cool. Hide and seek because there's adrenaline. Okay. Cool. So I am basically asking this question because, oh, yeah, we have Witcher 3. Uh, our famous Polish example uh, and uh, and the great game. I don't really know anti monopoly. Can you can you provide the, the description of anti monopoly? <laughs> cool. So guys, why I'm uh, I am asking this question? Not not only to uh, kind of uh, energize you. Uh, this question is important because usually when people think about gamification, they think about this very simple. Uh, games uh, which basically give people points, badges, and leaderboards. And uh, yeah, actually, people love games because they create some emotional uh, experience for for players. And because there is um, there is happening something specific, which uh, which entertain us. So today we would be focusing more on this entertainment and emotional uh, phase of these games. And uh, and these uh, points, badges, and leaderboards will come at the end. So today we will go through the process, uh, five points process. Uh, first, we will speak about gamification. What's that? What are the examples? So I would like to give you a very short introduction to the topic, and then we will uh, go through our case study. So we will define the problem we want to solve, uh, understand our player and uh, their motivation and uh, deploy fun in, in terms of very specific uh, engagement loop and game concept. So uh, gamification, uh, what are your, uh, you know, uh, most closely uh, inspirations regarding gamification? What, are, what, what, what do you think of when you think of gamification? Can you answer in the chat? What, what is the definition? What is your definition of, of gamification or uh, how, uh, how we could use this gamification into social projects? To make something boring, fun, and enjoyable. Yeah, involvement. Yeah, so we can use games in, in teaching some topic, sure. Yeah, so gamification could could make this participation and and engagement rewarding. Okay, cool. So thank you for not answering uh, about points and badges. Our short uh, uh, um, challenge with telling your favorite game worked, uh, and I want to I want to uh, introduce uh, this uh, very formal. Definition. So Wikipedia says that gamification is the application of game design elements and game principles 
So this element of games, but this elements and principles and this game thinking mindset in non-game contexts. So actually in areas of life which, uh, which are not very gameful, uh, or it can be de uh, defined as a set of activities and processes uh, to solve some problems or applying uh, uh, the characteristics of game elements. So basically when we have some problem to solve, and this problem is, is caused by low engagement of people, we could try to use these specific game elements and game mechanics that, make, that makes games very engaging to, to, to increase people's motivation to, uh, to do some very specific tasks. And uh, because this is a very attractive uh, idea, we could find uh, examples of gamification in marketing, sales, uh, human resources, but also in uh, social projects, it's becoming more and more uh, um, used in education, as you suggested in the chat, uh, but also uh, a lot of uh, um, startup that has been born lately uh, has some uh, elements of uh, gamification to drive users motivation and uh, to increase this, uh, uh, increase this uh, lifetime value of, of each user. So, but, but to not stay with these boring uh, definitions, I want to share some examples, different ones. So first one is Zombies Run. It's, uh, it's an uptake to gamify the process of running. So if you uh, try to, uh, to motivate yourself to, to run a few times a week, you probably know that this uh, experience of running is pretty much boring. So one company from UK, created a game in which you uh, become uh, a main character of, of a very interesting story. So you were um, thrown off a helicopter. Uh, you lost your memory, but you, uh, you woke up in a world which is attacked by a uh, zombie virus. And people are hiding in a, uh, in a cities which are a world from the outside world. And uh, you as a main character, you need to make some missions uh, to help humanity sur survive. So each one is a narrative story about you trying to, uh, to help some kids that, that are struck, uh, stuck in a, uh, in a park and surrounded by zombies, or you need to go to a very old shop to get some ingredients for some medicines. So each, each run is a story you hear on your speakers. And uh, from time to time, uh, you are, uh, if you turn on the uh, very specific mode, uh, so two or three times each uh, half an hour, you hear this very specific noise like <sighs> So you can hear that zombies are right behind you and you need to increase your pace uh, to, to run away from these zombies and uh, save uh, all, the, uh, all the assets you gathered during this run. Uh, this game is so en uh, engaging that while you install it, you need to sign the honor code that you will not uh, run on the red light because some of the people uh, hearing this specific noise of zombies uh, were, uh, were cheating even with uh, their own safety. So this is an example of the game, which uses uh, a very, a very uh, sophisticated, attractive narrative uh, to gamify a very popular uh, activity of running. This is, uh, of course, uh, a mobile app. You can try it uh, by yourself. Different example is uh, one of my favorite examples, which was created in Poland uh, to fight with a very specific problem, problem of uh, pet owners who don't uh, tidy up the park after uh, their pupils do what they do in the parks. So uh, in three Polish parks, there was, uh, there was this specific machine you can see on the screen. It's called uh, Recuperator in Polish. There is some uh, uh, little s spelling game. Uh, but basically, it works like uh, when you go for a walk with your dog, uh, you collect the, the poo of your dog, you, you put it into this specific hole, uh, you, uh, you, mm, you, you play this, uh, uh, this uh, slot machine, and if you get four bones, you win some, uh, some, some tools, some, some toy for your dog. 
Yeah, so it's very easy. It's uh, it's put in the context of the park. It does not use a uh, mobile app or any, you know digital uh, stuff to, to, to take uh, a part of it. But it works really, really well in parks, in free cities, I think in Poznan, Zielonagura and Gdańsk, where this machine uh, uh, was, was, uh, was put. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it created an effect in which uh, in, in the radius of two kilometers, uh, all the parks were absolutely clean. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, the dog owners were collecting pools of other owners uh, just to increase their chances to win some toy. Uh, so yeah, this example is very interesting because it shows that usually when we think of gamification, we think of very uh, complicated uh, uh, mobile app we could create, but sometimes it, it, it might be very easy and put into the context and it could work. And the third example, uh, uh, very small example, but very effective, is uh, is example that are that that is used in electric cars. I don't know if you have one, but uh, mm, but you know in in the most uh, typical uh, car which is fueled by uh, by a petrol, uh, you would have this uh, mm, this sign of uh, of how much of of this fuel you are using uh, on a given moment, and sometimes it says. You know, you are using 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's 85. So it's very difficult to follow. And uh, basically, it does not give people very specific uh, and actionable feedback. So uh, especially in electric cars, uh, a few years ago, when it was very important to drive economically, because these batteries were not uh, such uh, such big that, that days, uh, uh, these car creators had to think about different way to encourage people uh, to drive more economically. So they changed this uh, uh, this not very actionable uh, uh, metric into that small green ball you see on the right uh, part of the screen. So uh, when you uh, when you accelerate too much. This ball gets uh, gets to the top of this uh, scale and gets red. And uh, also, when you uh, you you are using brakes too much, it goes uh, low and uh, becomes uh, red again. So the task of the driver is to keep this ball uh, as much as possible in the center of this scale, uh, so drivers understand when they are driving economically and when uh, they don't. And this very simple uh, but enjoyable and actionable uh, signage uh, in, uh, decreased uh, the use of energy in Chevrolet Volt, because uh, it was Chevrolet Volt in 2011, uh, by, I think, more than 15%. So this is a huge difference in terms of uh, electricity used, and especially in Poland, when almost all electricity is created by burning coal, it creates a significant change uh, for, for, for our climate. Uh, so Fernanda asks me, how do we differentiate uh, tactical idea and gamification? And for me as a designer, um, I, I actually don't differentiate them because usually uh, when people come to me and ask me to help with some uh, engagement challenge, we are trying to create, you know, um, a simple tool as possible. Because the more we uh, we work in this gamification field, we see that more uh, complicated stuff uh, is is uh, more difficult to be uh, to be accepted by users. So I would think uh, of it from a different perspective. We have a challenge to engage people into something, and the the, the simpler and the more effective. Uh, the final solution is it's it's the better for for people. So it's not the uh, for me it's not the differentiation between tactical and the idea and gamification, but uh, but this journey to find the the most simple uh, solution. So you can see from these three uh, very nice examples that gamification is using uh, some some elements and some tools. So we are using collaboration uh, and competition. It's not always about competition. 
Uh, we are using different kinds of awards, achievements, uh, badges, but it's not really, from my perspective, about these very specific tools. It's more about the feeling of being engaged and uh, this emotional challenge uh, we are facing during this uh, gamified experience. So uh, this is the this is the introduction to gamification, and I would like to ask you uh, a first challenge. So imagine you are running a, a social project. This is actually the case we will be solving today. And this project is a nationwide activization program for local leaders uh, in small villages in under uh, 10,000 uh, citizens. And you uh, run a training for them uh, last month, and you trained leaders in 50 villages. And you are looking for a tool to motivate those leaders to organize a lot of projects in local communities. Uh, and of course, because gamification is uh, fashionable, you thought that gamification might work. So uh, you want those people to organize local events, run self-development trainings for, for YAFs, uh, uh, and build partnerships with local stakeholders. So please uh, write a few initial ideas of how we could use gamification to achieve these goals. And please be, uh, be brave and, and, and try. This is the, the first, uh, first try we would have today. But of course, uh, later on, we would uh, dig deeper into details uh, and uh, get to know the whole process. So what are your ideas how we could use gamification to motivate local leaders uh, to organize more local activities and projects? Please write in the chat. Yeah, so we get offer bonuses that will re uh, reduce taxes. Cool. Uh, but uh, let's let's look for more up, uh, uh, more approachable solutions without uh, changing the law regulations. So we can create a game of managing your kingdom. Yeah, great. We can we can create a, a route uh, of Olympic uh, torch to be passed. Settlers type of challenge. Cool. Doable challenges that require collaboration. Great. So, so from these answers, we have like three different types of answers. Yeah. So we uh, we we think of some very specific yeah, incentives that we could introduce to their life to to make uh, themselves more uh, willing to to be uh, active. We have some ideas of uh, gamified experience and game concepts, and we have uh, some some ideas for uh, for a very specific uh, type of challenges uh, that they want to uh, that, that they could collaborate on. Cool, thank you. So let's see if uh, if if it could work. So basically, eighty percent of gamifications that we see on the market. Uh, or so on the market in the last years are failing. So this is interesting because uh, we think that it is so attractive tool, it, it should work. But uh, most of designers and most of especially first time designers fail. So we could uh, ask ourselves, uh, why is it happening? So uh, there is a very nice uh, story I want to share with you about uh, gamification failure. So uh, there is a story of a very specific uh, preschool in the United States. Uh, it was uh, in some rich neighborhoods, so people of um, middle class managers were attending this preschool. And this preschool was well known in the neighborhood because uh, they offered a very uh, interesting and uh, creative ways to develop uh, uh, skills uh, of these kids and was managed in a democratic way. So kids uh, actually had this opportunity to make decisions of, of what is, is going to happen in this preschool. So everyone was happy. Uh, um, uh, parents were happy because uh, these kids were uh, developing very fast and in a very creative way. Uh, the teachers who were teaching in this uh, preschool were happy because uh, they had a lot of satisfaction of working with these kids, but there was only one problem. The problem was that uh, these uh, parents, middle class managers, uh, they were usually late to, uh, to, to take kids out from the school. Uh, sometimes this, uh, this, this late was five minutes and sometimes it was 45 minutes. So almost each day, 
these preschool teachers had to sit late uh, at work uh, to uh, to wait for these parents so they were looking for some solution uh, for this problem and uh, they had a very specific idea so they thought they could exchange these minutes of lateness for points uh, so parents could collect uh, punishment points and uh, at the end of the month uh, they could exchange these points for a very specific fine they would have to pay for this preschool so this preschool could buy some new uh, creative equipment for kids so they thought this uh, very specific kind of punishment would be uh, would be accepted by parents because at the end it's it's a form of of uh, increasing uh, the efficiency of the learning process for their kids uh, and it might create some motivation to uh, for them to uh, to take this uh, these kids early and what happened actually after implementing this uh, this specific motivational scheme uh, these uh, parents uh, started to uh, to become more and more late so first it was five minutes and then sometimes it was even one hour and why because uh, this very specific intrinsic motivation these parents had intrinsic motivation of of taking care of these teachers they they loved and uh, you know uh, trying to be respectful for their time was exchanged with this extrinsic motivation of uh, of, of fines uh, and uh, you know something very very economical so most of these parents uh, started treating this uh, this lateness as a economical transaction uh, uh, because they thought uh, um, maybe it's uh, more economical to stay more in work and earn more money than to go to this uh, preschool and catch uh, the kid uh, and you know pay some amount uh, some percentage of of their salary they could earn uh, in a job so the problem with most gamification is, and it, it, it comes out from the story as well, that we usually uh, mistake uh, gamification uh, with uh, you know, very specific tools and not this motivational uh, scheme that we, that we should use to make people motivated. And we usually, uh, uh, we usually use e extrinsic motivation too much and, uh, and intrinsic motivations uh, to less. So first, gamification is about motivation. Yeah. So we should uh, think about uh, what are the uh, specific motivations of our target target group, and we should try to leverage them in our design. Second thing, gamification is about emotions. So if we create gamification that uh, actually invoke emotions, that includes uh, emotions uh, in people. Uh, we would uh, probably be on a better position that, that, than if we create something pretty boring and, um, and, and based on, on very specific game tools without this enjoyment. And uh, mm, yeah, of course, fun is not equal points. So if we think of gamification as a, you know, some, some challenge of getting more points and getting a bigger level, usually we would fail. Uh, so we should focus more on this experience, social experience that game brings, than just uh, getting more points. Uh, and a very important thing, we should think both about extrinsic motivation we should use, uh, and how we can uh, leverage on this extrinsic motivation of, uh, of for example, some bonuses, uh, and intrinsic motivation, so we, could, we should understand uh, what are the, the biggest motivations for our target group, and we should uh, implement them uh, in our game design. So the basic task of every game designer should be to understand the target group very well, and we should understand uh, we should understand what our target group likes, uh, what are their goals, uh, and how we can help them achieve their goals in life. We should uh, understand uh, what's fun of them, uh, what are the very specific types of activities that are most enjoyable for them. We should understand, uh, understand uh, what kind of movies they watch, what kind of TV series uh, they watch to understand what kind of cultural uh, schemes we should use in our game. Or we should understand how do they spend their time to understand when we have these very specific engagement opportunities we could use in our game. 
And last but not least, uh, it is very important to create a gamified experience that is very compatible with our user's li uh, lifestyle. So we should uh, try to, to minimize the cost of entry to the game. Uh, and we should uh, be as much as possible compatible with existing habits, procedures, and processes. As an example, I, I could tell a story of, uh, of uh, gamification that was implemented in one of Polish uh, corporations. It was uh, gamification that was uh, focused on um, engaging uh, managers to learn uh, new management techniques and to develop themselves. And uh, after these managers entered this game, it showed that they have more than 150 tasks. So uh, if I were this uh, very busy manager and saw that I have 150 tasks to, to do, I would very fast uh, run away from this gamification uh, and, uh, and go away because I don't have so much time. So we have to think when this uh, specific person has some opportunity to uh, to, to, to become engaged and how much, they, how much time they have and how we could create uh, this gamification as a part of their existing habits. And most basically, we should, uh, we should try to build uh, this, uh, this, something you can see on the screen. So we should create a game which is uh, lovable and enjoyable than a game which is uh, you know, uh, motivating people by these extrinsic motivators. We need both, but if we miss this very specific uh, en enjoyment and, uh, and fun, we would probably lose. Yeah, so understanding this, we could uh, go to, to our case. Uh, but maybe you have some questions you want to ask in the, in the chat. This is a very nice moment to, um, to ask them, because then we will dig deeper into the project. No questions so far. So I would move. OK, so guys, first I want to introduce our case study. So we are working on a project uh, that I described in this first challenge of using gamification. So we are working on a project that was organized uh, by Orange Poland. Uh, it was a social project of their foundation. Uh, so they decided to, uh, uh, to renovate uh, um, one room in uh, 50 Polish villages. And they invested some money to put their free computers, PlayStation, television, te te uh, TV, sofa, uh, and uh, they equipped uh, these local leaders with uh, some knowledge and abilities to organize local life in these spaces. The goal was to, uh, to integrate local communities and to create uh, educational opportunities, especially in terms of uh, teaching them uh, digital skills. The project was uh, was started in 2012, and at that time, uh, many people, especially in uh, small uh, small towns and small villages, didn't have so much digital skills to, to, to take part in a digital revolution. So we have a very nice uh, opportunity because we have these spaces, we have trained leaders, uh, and we want to create uh, an online platform that would motivate them to, uh, to take more action. And um, of course, this action that we want to, uh, to invoke is offline action. We want uh, these people to organize uh, stuff in this local community, but also we want to understand how much is happening there. So we also want to motivate them uh, to share these experiences, share these ideas online. So the goal of uh, our project uh, is to, uh, to motivate those people to organize as many activities in local community as possible, taking their uh, time circumstances and, uh, and local circumstances. Of course, uh, we are not striking for any event or any projects. So if we could create uh, this specific motivation to organize a very nice and high quality project, that, that would be great. Uh, and it would be great if they uh, build this habit, very specific habit of reporting local initiatives each week. So we don't want them to report once uh, six months, but we want to get this information very often 
to understand what is going on and uh, to be able to react if, uh, if there are any challenges or risks. And the last goal we have is to share, uh, is, is to uh, motivate them uh, to share and collaborate on their ideas for activities because we trained 50 people. Uh, we, we think it's possible uh, that they would be inspired uh, by other leaders and organize very similar uh, ac activities uh, in different uh, places. So these are the goals. And every time we, uh, we try to organize uh, gamification or um, similar project, we need to think of expected behaviors. So a very specific activities that would be part of our game uh, and uh, that could be measured some way uh, for which we could uh, reward people or give uh, them some uh, valuable feedback. And in this case, we have both offline and online activities. And in terms of offline activities, of course, we are, uh, we are trying to motivate them to organize events and trainings for local community and uh, integrate local stakeholders to build some level of uh, independency of these spaces. Yeah? So we want to, to help them become independent after two or three years so we don't have to support them forever. And in terms of all online activities, we want to motivate them to, uh, to re report local activities they undertake on our project platform. We want to uh, motivate them to share their very specific ideas for activities they want to create so others could be inspired. Uh, we want to, uh, to make them willing full to support other local leaders. And uh, because there is uh, very interesting knowledge base that, that would be created on this platform. We want those people to read this knowledge base and, uh, and to inspire themselves. Uh, what can they organize in these local activities? So this is our case. And, uh, and now, knowing these very specific goals and expected behaviors, uh, please try to answer this previous question uh, once again. So if you could uh, uh, suggest some ideas of how we could use gamification to achieve our goals and engage people in these very specific online and offline activities. Please uh, write in the chat and let's see if our ideas are different than before or maybe the previous ideas are uh, good enough uh, so we could work on them lately. I'm waiting for your chat answers. How can we use gamification to, uh, to create this uh, willingfulness to, to, to share projects online and organize? Yeah, this is the objective slide. And after one minute, I will change to the expected behaviors. Okay, we have some, great. So Paulina uh, wrote that we could create a global national platform for, of villages uh, and, uh, in which they can share stories and organize cultural exchanges, exchanges between villages based on their interests. Free entry for early adopters, uh, for various cultural events. Cool, this, this sounds very, very focused on their specific needs and, uh, and circumstances. Fernanda thought about something involving live streaming and uh, uh, habitual uh, events they could organize, like Mother's Mondays. And some competition with leaders using leaderboards, rewards, and other types of motivational tools. OK, maybe we could mix all of them together and see what we could get. But uh, obviously, I see that when we understood what are the very specific goals and expected behaviors, uh, you thought more about uh, um, uh, ideas that does not contain any narrative or, um, or you know, these en enjoyment tools uh, or fun activities. And that's interesting. And uh, in a minute, we will uh, think if it's the right direction we should take or not. OK, but we see that uh, our, our uh, perspective changed a bit, and that's very good. Uh, 
So I think uh, that if we want to find these uh, best ideas we could find, we should first uh, try to dig deeper into the problem. And uh, if we want to solve it, we need to understand some, something we call internal and external causes of the problem. So internal causes of the problem are related to very specific person's beliefs and attitudes. So every time when people think something like, I'm not good enough, or I'm too poor to invest money, or I would need to spend thousands of hours to understand this, uh, we, we, we face this very specific internal cause that we could solve with, uh, with uh, motivational tools and the right uh, communication. But these are not the only causes of the problems. We also face sometimes external causes of the problems. So they are uh, related to some external conditions like legal regulations, social background, or a very specific situation around our target group. So this might be under investment of some social system we are working on. Uh, it uh, might be old and un uh, un uh, intuitive uh, platform which is a gateway for engagement or something like badly designed bonus scheme, uh, which we saw uh, in the example of uh, preschool motivational, motivational system. So if we want to uh, solve this, uh, this problem we have with our project, uh, we should think of this specific uh, uh, causes of this problem. So we would define our problem as a huge geographical distribution of trained leaders uh, and a high probability that these leaders uh, will have low motivation to act after facing some local obstacles and challenges. Because usually during the training, everyone is, uh, uh, is very uh, motivated, but when they come back, they usually meet some you know, hateful people, uh, so this motivation could uh, be lowered. So what are these specific internal and external causes? So in terms of internal causes, from our research we undertook in this project, we learned that these people uh, fear online reporting of, of projects they, they do because they, they, they had some um, thoughts that this information could be used somehow against them. Uh, also, they, uh, they didn't have so much incentives to share local progress. And of course, if you have some busy people, they would uh, prefer to organize something than, uh, than write what they done before online. And uh, of course, this process of sharing stuff online uh, was pretty boring, especially in comparison to, to what they could organize there and uh, this emotional states they could get from, uh, from being with other people. Uh, so that was also a problem to solve. But in terms of external causes, we saw that uh, some of these people were perceived as uh, local freaks uh, who are working for free for others. So they, they needed to face this very specific stereotype and to build their own uh, brand of uh, effective people. And sometimes they faced uh, political pressure, pressure from local governments. So these are very specific situations. Sometimes uh, a local mayor uh, is feeling that uh, these people are threats uh, for their, uh, their, uh, their rule. So they might uh, try to uh, make it more difficult to organize stuff there. Uh, and of course, uh, these are not people who are working for a full amount of time on this project. So they don't have a lot of time to both organize and report stuff online. And uh, the first step in our process of designing uh, would be to analyze this problem and try to find or choose two free engagement barriers that would be crucial for us to be solved with the help of gamification. And our design would, uh, would face or, or focus on these very specific uh, uh, causes uh, so we could uh, change uh, these uh, this causes of the problem. So, Please take a look at this uh, slide we see here on Miro, and please suggest which are the most important two or three uh, problem causes that might be addressed with the use of gamification. What do you think? Which are uh, most addressable or most important to be 
um, to be solved. Local freak, I agree with that. Yeah, a few votes for a local freak. Yeah, uh, sharing process, lack of time, fear of online reporting, lack of incentives. Yeah, so many people are choosing this boring process of sharing online. So we could choose it as a second most important problem cause. Mm, someone suggests shortage of time. Uh, I would not like to choose this, uh, this uh, problem cause because I feel we don't have much power in this, in this area. So we, we will not create more time for those people. And this is a thing we need to face. So uh, I would uh, like to focus more on, on stuff which is addressable uh, uh, by us. Uh, some people suggest this fear of online reporting, so we could choose it. And maybe we will uh, choose the lack of uh, incentives as the last one. So we have four of them. We probably cannot solve the political pressure from local governments and shortage of time. So uh, in our process of design, we would try to, to do a few things. So first, we would try to, under, to build a gamified system that would uh, change this, uh, this perceived brand of these people. And if, if we succeed in that, uh, then we could create a big emotional and practical value for them. And we would love to change this process of reporting to be more attractive or more meaningful for them. So we have two, two most important uh, uh, challenges. So first is to change uh, uh, perceived uh, image of, of local, uh, of active people. And second one is to uh, build more uh, incentivized process and more attractive process of sharing this progress. Cool. So please remember uh, about them and we will uh, uh, come back to them in a minute. Yeah, so we understood uh, what are the problem causes and what to do with them. So now we would uh, need to understand our player and their motivation to understand uh, how this gamification should look like. So usually in this process, as a designer, we would use uh, personas. So these uh, fictional characters who, is, uh, who are uh, typical representatives of our target groups. And to save some time for us, I created this very specific persona of our target group. And I would like to ask you to, uh, to focus on this person because we will be creating gamification for Martina. And Martina, uh, is a local librarian. She's uh, 32 years old and uh, she's a super active librarian, basically. So she became passionate about organizing activities for local communities uh, quite recently, since she started her job at, li at the library one or two years ago. She loves it uh, with all her heart. Martina is a favorite person of uh, all kids in the neighborhood. She would love to pay them back for this love in creating development opportunities for them. Martina is a great social worker as well, so she is very good at organizing workshops or any kind of uh, enjoyable activities. She also got married two years ago, but uh, she's struggling uh, to get pregnant. Her husband works for local sawmill as a production line manager. So this is our person. And uh, while creating these personas, we need to think about specific engagement opportunities we have and the very specific motivations Martina has. So in terms of engagement opportunities, uh, we know that uh, Martina is opening this Orange Studio in two weeks and she will use our platform mainly at work in the studio. So we should not expect uh, anything to be done at home. Uh, and uh, her specific motivation to use this platform is to use this platform to find some ideas for activities for kids and other members of local community. So we have to keep that in mind. And very specific motivations of Martina are, uh, are, um, are this uh, need of being a modern librarian with, with real impact. So she is not satisfied with giving people books, 
she wants to use this opportunity that she works for a very important local place to have a real impact and power on the village. Uh, she likes price from, from other people and she gets a lot of positive feedback from neighbors. So some of them, of course, love them and some of them think of her as a very strange person who is active. Uh, but uh, what she lacks is uh, wider acknowledgement. So if we could create um, some tools to show that uh, very important people from Orange Foundation uh, think uh, she is uh, a very eff effective person, that might help uh, to, uh, to convince people which are not very positive to, for her that she, she is doing a great job. And uh, of course, she feels responsible for kids and would appreciate any development opportunities uh, she could create for them, especially if they are not uh, something uh, available for everyone. So please uh, keep uh, that person in mind. And uh, in a minute, we will think of uh, how we can use these specific motivations uh, to, to create uh, 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 efficient uh, motivational scheme for her. But before we do that, I want to uh, tell you a bit about these uh, motivations as a framework for our thinking. So we have uh, a few frameworks, motivational frameworks we are using uh, as a gamification designers. First of them is something we call SAPS framework. And this is a framework created uh, on the basis of uh, game research. So some researchers that were uh, actively st studying motivations of uh, players that are playing massive multiplayer online games found that uh, there are four different kinds of things that motivate people to take part in, in that game. So at least motivating things is stuff uh, they might want. Uh, and uh, especially stuff that is tangible and not very related to those people. So if we think of rewarding these people with, for example, mugs or pen drives of some kind, that probably won't work. And uh, uh, the better solutions are uh, in a field of intangible rewards. So a possibility to earn some, you know, uh, badge or uh, or some virtual good that is related to the game and create some opportunities in this game. Second most engaging thing is power. So when people feel uh, they have the possibility to take some decisions for other people uh, and or, or they can manage uh, some projects or some group of people, uh, they, they like it very much. Uh, if they have opportunities to, to earn some stuff uh, or some opportunities that other people don't have, like, for example, uh, very attractive training that is only available for 10 most active people, yeah, they would love to take part in it and uh, they would uh, strike for, for this kind of opportunity. But most engaging thing and most engaging scheme is, is giving people opportunity to gain a high social status. And especially because in real life, social status is difficult to earn, uh, then if we could help those people create attractive social status or uh, feeling of being important people, uh, that might work very well and engage them for a longer period of time. The other framework uh, we usually use is a framework based on uh, uh, evolutional approach or motivation. So uh, especially, uh, especially uh, Professor, uh, uh, Professor uh, Fogg, who is uh, uh, a manager at the Persuasive Technology Lab at Stanford, uh, says that uh, we have different, three different kinds of, of motivations. First, uh, they are based in a first uh, step in, in uh, our evolution of, as humans, when we were hunters and seekers. So in this, this field of motivation, we are seeking for a tangible assets and survival strategies. So everything that helps us survive and win, like food, key assets, power opportunities, uh, it's, uh, it, it creates a very specific motivation for us. The second level, uh, when we started to create tribes, are the rewards that uh, make us more accepted, attractive, important, or included. 
So most of the people are seeking actively for social rewards caused by relationships with other people. And the last uh, stage of our development was uh, development of, of our self. So these are the rewards and motivations that are based in our need to, uh, to develop ourselves uh, and our need to feel more competent and better with each, uh, each amount of time. So everything that could create this feeling of mastery, competence, and progress would be appreciated in such a system. But what are the examples? Uh, for example, uh, rewards of tribe are very nicely used in a Stack Overflow. This is uh, an online system uh, for uh, developers. Uh, this is actually an online forum uh, in which they share their development challenges and help, help themselves. And uh, active users are earning uh, points and badges, which usually are not very effective way of, uh, of engaging people in gamification. But in this very specific example, where we have uh, you know, thousands of developers uh, and with a very specific knowledge, the opportunity to, to have a great uh, social profile with a lot of badges that says that you are a great organizer, or you are great at, uh, for example, specific technology, it creates a very tangible uh, work opportunity for these people, and it works very, very, uh, very nice. Uh, the rewards of hunt, uh, we can see them everything, uh, everywhere around us, for example, in casino. So a possibility to win some uh, huge amount of money, even if it's not very much, it, it creates uh, this big, uh, strive for, for this money, uh, for example, in lotteries, uh, or any kind of discounts we could uh, have in a shop uh, are based on this specific uh, type of motivation. Uh, and rewards of, of self are very well represented in Duolingo. Uh, so educational service that helps us learn new languages. And as you can see, uh, they, uh, they divided this learning process into different stages. And uh, going for another stages uh, uh, is giving us these very specific badges with crowns. And uh, they look very nice. And they give us this feeling that we are progressing in this process of learning new language. So these are uh, the examples. And now we should think how we could use these uh, very specific motivations to, to leverage on motivation of, of our uh, persona, so Martina. So we should answer for some questions. We should find an answer for some questions. What kind of rewards might be attractive for them, especially in terms of staff or some development opportunities? How, do, uh, how does Martina want to be perceived by other people and how we could help, the, uh, help her create this very specific image? Or how we could help Martina feel a more competent and uh, professional? So now uh, we would uh, change our view to Miro and I will ask you to write some ideas what kind of rewards of hunt, tribe and self we could use. So first, uh, please take a look at Martina again so you could uh, understand her motivations. So I will uh, remind you that uh, her most important motivations are being a modern librarian with a real impact on her local community. Second thing is her willingness to be more acknowledged by uh, some people uh, from a central level of, let's say, activism. So not local people, but, but people from different, uh, uh, different uh, social uh, background. And the third is uh, this very specific need to create opportunities for, for local YAFs and kids. Uh, so, yeah. Now we need to think uh, of very specific uh, things. So first, uh, first uh, brainstorm we would have on rewards of hand. So please write a few ideas of how we could uh, help Martina uh, survive and win. So what kind of uh, assets we could provide to them that would be meaningful for her 
that that would uh, help them help her um, uh, achieve uh, her uh, intrinsic motivations. Please write in the chat. Okay, titles. Very nice idea. Kids to distribute to the kids, cool. Some trainings she could win, cool. Diplomas and certificates, I think it's a great idea as well. Oh, that's a nice idea. So, so a badge she could uh, she could have on her wall, so other people could see she's a very effective uh, local activist. Nice. So this badge could uh, have the face of, of a poster on which Martina would be presented as a very impactful person. And power to, uh, to, uh, to veto projects or to vote for projects. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a, a bunch of nice ideas. Okay. So maybe we could uh, move to this second uh, type of motivation. So rewards of tribe. So please now uh, think of uh, an ideas. We have some of them. I would uh, I would bring them here, but some ideas that could uh, make Martina feel more accepted, attractive, important, or included. So let's let's focus on on uh, on some social schemes we might leverage to make her feel more important or attractive or acceptable. I think this poster is uh, is somewhere between uh, this hand and tribe, as well as this uh, badge. Do you have another idea? Maybe I will uh, inspire you a bit. So for example, I think we could create some kind of uh, leaderboard of the most active uh, local leaders. I love this uh, this idea of Katarzyna. So a personalized video that could be sent you know, to local uh, stakeholders. This video could be published uh, on the website, sure. So possibility to share video on local media. Yeah, and maybe we could uh, make some kind of partnership with uh, national association. But how how can we use this national association to to build this uh, feeling of uh, of being attractive and uh, effective? Yeah, so we could uh, give opportunity to speak on the conference of librarians. Okay, these are a very nice ideas. Did I miss something? Yeah, and we could organize some kind of gala or event uh, that she could be publicly praised. Great. Uh, and last but not least, uh, rewards of self. So what can we do for Martina to help her feel more competent and better? We had some ideas like certificates, but maybe we can create something new. So here we want to uh, help her feel the specific feeling of progress she makes and uh, being on the way to some kind of mastery. Uh, so, so this very specific feeling of self-development that could be leveraged by some online tools or something we could uh, do for her. Different than certificates. Cool, so we could create some kind of uh, formal program of development for her, yeah? With different stages and uh, different opportunities like mentoring. Uh, we could create uh, mentoring opportunities. Some support for her own projects. Yeah, and comparison, some kind of comparisons, so she could feel better than other uh, librarians. Yeah, and using her ideas to be deployed in other libraries. This is, uh, I think, very powerful 
uh, idea. Okay, Fernanda asked if we uh, could share everything. We would, uh, and we can. Okay, cool. I think we have a very, very nice uh, list of potential uh, motivators for Martina. And as you see, uh, they are a bit different than we had at the beginning of our workshop, yeah? So at first we thought about uh, some tax opportunities. And now when we understand this person, our ideas are much more tailored for uh, her specific needs. Cool. So this is a great time to move uh, to another phase because uh, before, we, uh, before we reorganize the whole concept, we need to think about fun. So we know we have some ideas for uh, this, uh, for leveraging her motivations, but now we want to create a feeling of fun. And creating fun is uh, not very easy. <laughs> I, need to, I need to confess. But fun is something we can design. It's not something that exists in nature and can be touched only. It can be designed. Uh, this fun does not have to be something pleasurable. It could be challenging as well. Uh, some of you wrote uh, about games that you love because they are about problem solving. And uh, this fun is subjective. So to create something that would work, we again need to uh, focus on our target group. And uh, usually when we create the idea for a game, uh, we are using different frameworks to generate ideas. We don't know any like a uh, hundred percent effective process of of creating fun, but we can use some frameworks that already exist to help ourselves uh, think of them. So uh, the tool I want to share with you is a triangle of game components and uh, and uh, elements. Uh, so we could be inspired by this. So first, uh, so, so basically we divide uh, game elements into three levels. So game dynamics, game mechanics, and game components. And ga game dynamics are the big picture aspects of gamified system that create this uh, very specific theme of the game or, or emotional theme of the game. So they could be some constraints, emotions, some narrative we would have or some uh, progression that our, uh, that our players are having or specific types of relationships they have with other players. And uh, different way of thinking about this is this uh, very nice uh, division of different kinds of fun. So when we uh, brainstorm ideas, we think of different kinds of fun that could be attractive for our user. So we say that uh, there is a sensational type of fun. So when a game is a sense pleasure, it uses a lot of visual and uh, audio cues to engage player. We say about uh, fantasy type of fun. So when a game is a kind of make-believe, uh, uh, interesting world to be explored that does not uh, actually exist, we could use narrative type of fun. So we could use an unfolding story as an engaging tool for, for, for our players. We could use a challenging game. So this very specific theme, when a game is an obstacle course, when uh, the level of difficulty rises with, uh, with each challenge. We could also use uh, fellowship type of fun. So when game is a social framework for people, or uh, something like uh, discover type of fun. So when, when, when our players are discovering new areas of the game and trying to, uh, to understand the whole picture. And we have uh, two last ones. And one is expression type of fun. So when a game is uh, experiencing ex expressing ourselves like uh, karaoke, so we create some kind of opportunity to show uh, the skills of the player and uh, and some stage they, they could per perform it. But of course, not only karaoke, it could be also something like Minecraft when we are creating our own land. And of course, submission type of, of, uh, of game where we are using uh, something mindless 
to engage people and help them rest. So in a minute, we will be thinking of, uh, of which of these types uh, would be the best. And if in terms of a fellowship game, uh, I could give you an example of uh, massive multiplayer online games uh, where we are creating these uh, guilds of uh, many people who are having uh, joint uh, adventures and, um, and challenges. Uh, yeah, and basically uh, what is uh, obvious here uh, is that uh, most uh, games are mixing different types of fun. So, for example, a Witcher game is a mix of a sensa sensational game, fantasy game, narrative game, uh, challenge game. Uh, it does not use a lot of elements of fellowship. Uh, it uses uh, elements of discovery. Uh, yeah, so we have five different types of fun in one game. So, what we usually do we are trying to brainstorm ideas of how we could use different types of this of fun, and we are trying to uh, include them in one uh, coherent uh, game concept. I wanted to share with you some example, but we are uh, running out of time, so I would move to uh, another uh, part. So we move to game mechanics. Uh, game mechanics are. Um, are the basic processes that drive uh, the, the progression of the game uh, and generate player engagement. So we can divide something like challenges that people face, chances, competition and cooperation uh, among players, uh, feedback we give them, resource acquisition, rewards transaction, or turns. So they're very specific uh, things that, that push the game forward. And uh, at the bottom of our triangle, we have game components. So they are specific representations of our game mechanics and dynamics. So achievements, avatars, badges, uh, gifts that people are giving uh, to themselves, levels, leaderboards, points. So everything we think of gamification at the beginning. And uh, now our uh, challenge is to think of how we can we can uh, use uh, these elements of fun to make local activism more enjoyable. So we are trying to change organizing these local events or local activities or sharing ideas of these local activities into something more enjoyable and more fun. And we would think about it in, in these three levels. So first in the field of dynamics, First, we would ask ourselves if we think we should use any kind of narrative uh, for this target group, or uh, maybe it would be uh, mm, dangerous, uh, or what kind of fun we should use to engage uh, our persona. And then we would choose free game mechanics that may engage our persona and free game components. So I will move to, uh, to Mira. So first, uh, please uh, write in the chat if you think we should use game narrative. Would it give more value or more threat to, uh, for our persona? So maybe the uh, actual question is, do you think that using narrative would help Martina get more engaged or she would feel uh, too childish uh, to, to be happy with some narrative? So uh, Fernanda thinks we should use narrative, but we should use narrative of, of the journey to not make it too childish. And, uh, and uh, okay, cool. So, uh, so if we agree that we should use this narrative, then we can, uh, then we could move to the next question. Everyone agrees. Okay, cool. So, guys, which kind of fun would be the best for uh, for Martina? What do you think? What should be the the the, the uh, basis for creating this uh, 
uh, this experience. We have some votes for expression and some votes for fellowship. Great. So do you have any specific ideas how co could we use uh, expression and fellowship uh, in practice? OK, so maybe we would think about this uh, in a later stage. So I would totally agree that expression and fellowship uh, seem to be most powerful in terms of our uh, persona. So now let's think how we could leverage uh, this very specific game mechanics uh, to uh, mm, to build a strong expression and fellowship type of fun. So we have an uh, idea from Joanna to use it as a social uh, social uh, team effort, team goals. Great. Any other ideas? Which uh, of the mechanics uh, could help us leverage on expression and uh, Mm, fellowship. Of course, let's think of uh, of game mechanics that would work for uh, Martina, not uh, not any resource giver and resource acquisition for kids. Fotini, could you uh, could you explain how? could you use win states uh, in practice? I mean, what is the very specific idea for this? I would write this resource acquisition and resource giving. And competition for the best projects or ideas in terms of expression. Okay, so we could have something like very clearly defined uh, goals, and if uh, the team uh, achieves this goal, they would win. Okay, cool. And uh, let's move to game components. Oh, you are very creative. New ideas are coming and coming. Um, but let's let's uh, stay with these ideas we have already because we are running out of time, and let's uh, focus on components. So let's think of three game components that may engage our persona and uh, leverage this uh, expression and fellowship. So take a look at uh, the list of game components, and let's think uh, which one we could use to create the final uh, the final concept. Unlocking content. Mm -hmm. Collections and badges. Leaderboards. Okay. Okay, great. So I would choose uh, more than three. So unlocking content, leaderboards, badges, gifting, and avatars. And I think this is already a lot uh, to be used in such a game. But you are very creative, and it would be great if we could uh, sometime divide you into a groups and work together on, on a few ideas, not only one. OK, great. So uh, to sum it up, we think that we should use some narrative of, of a journey uh, with uh, some good copywriting so to avoid the, the risk of being too childish, and that we, could uh, we should create a game based on expression fellowship. Fellowship between team 
local team of volunteers and kids that would uh, that would uh, 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 acquire some resources that would be redistributed among uh, among this team and kids. Uh, very clear win states and competition for the best ideas. And for this uh, experience and uh, effort, we would give them uh, some gifts, some badges. We would show the leaderboard of the most uh, active teams, and we would un unlock some content, probably and maybe in form of avatars. That's great. So we have a very nice uh, bunch of ideas in terms of fun, in terms of motivations, and in terms of uh, understanding what we should do to solve the problem we are solving. But unfortunately, uh, we have uh, already uh, quarter past, past 12, and Hanya is showing up to hurry me up. So what I want to do how is did to you explain know <laughs> how to uh, how to use these ideas to create a final game concept uh, by yourself. Hanya, would you give me the last five minutes? Of course. I can leave the stage and leave you five minutes. OK, thanks. So now when we have these very specific ideas, we need to concentrate on bringing these mm, mm, pieces of puzzle together. And how could we or sh how should we create this? So first and most important thing is to create uh, some we, something we call engagement loop. And this engagement loop is uh, a loop of three areas. So first, to understand what is our uh, most important motivation we want to build on. Uh, second, to list a list of activities that our uh, persona uh, would be doing in our game. And then uh, to think of very specific way of giving them feedback that would uh, drive on the, the motivations they have or build some new motivations. So now we should choose the best ideas and create uh, a very specific uh, idea that, uh, that would be used in a real life. And because we don't have so much time, I would explain how we did that in this very specific case study, because we created something very similar to your ideas. So I'm very excited that uh, you will see in a minute that uh, actually your idea worked very well. So uh, in terms of uh, motivation, yeah, we were building this motivation on the motivation to become more acknowledged and uh, to create uh, this uh, team experience of achieving uh, joint goals. So we divided all those uh, villages into teams. The teams were uh, built of, uh, of kids, of leaders and volunteers, and they were uh, engaged in very specific actions. These actions were basically describing what are they doing and undertaking in the local communities, but also we were giving them uh, challenges. Challenges in form of very specific ideas of events or projects they, they might organize in their local activities. And for these uh, challenges and for these uh, projects, uh, they were uh, given points, uh, points and badges. And these points were used uh, 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 they were collected uh, and they could exchange them for some rewards that were uh, giving them some new opportunities to, to organize projects. So there were some board games, some trainings, uh, some different uh, kinds of, uh, uh, of activities they could uh, participate in. Uh, so they felt that there is a very limited uh, amount of things they, they, they could work for. And uh, they used collective effort uh, to, uh, to, to drive even more motivation to act for others. And using internet platform helped us to create a very nice uh, profile of those leaders. And uh, on the profile of each leader, there was a list of achievements uh, they achieved in the process. Uh, and uh, every leader uh, saw from the beginning the list of achievements they might achieve. So they had this very specific a list of things they, they might do to become a very uh, efficient local activist. And uh, after we uh, choose these uh, very specific ideas to create an engagement loop, it is uh, great to create something we call game concept storyboard. 
So to think of how we could present the game uh, to the user so we could engage them. And there is a few important uh, marks here. So first, we need to have a very, uh, this very specific engaging theme for a game. So you thought about uh, journey uh, to become a better leader. This is a very nice theme we could use. Uh, but actually, we decided to, to stick with non-narrative experience because we thought these people are sometimes uh, because during this workshop we were creating for martina who is 32 years old but uh, other leaders were older for example we had librarians who had over 60 years old so we thought that might might be uh, discouraging uh, for them uh, and also we should think uh, of uh, how we could uh, engage people in a part of the process we call the mastery so how the most important and most engaged users could uh, become uh, some kind of ambassadors uh, engaging other players. And after we create such a concept, uh, there is uh, a very specific process we should undertake. So first, we should be the prototype, uh, prototype uh, that should be low cost, so we could uh, test uh, ideas for, for engagement. In this specific example, you could create uh, a uh, prototype with paper and scissors uh, and build some kind of uh, um, board uh, that would be used in uh, in this uh, Orange Studios to test uh, these ideas for a month and see how people are using them. Uh, then we could create the next iteration, so build a digital product that could uh, in, uh, use uh, very specific ideas uh, and uh, and then implement this uh, this uh, online tool uh, with a pilot uh, group of people, and then develop it with uh, with their feedback. And that's it. That's how we use uh, gamification. That's how we design it. And uh, at the at the very last stage, I have a slide which consists a very specific list of tips and tricks for you when you want to create gamification.